weekend, uh, which we will probably discuss as part of this uh, this weekend. Uh, hermetic philosophy is based on what is called the Hermetic Corpus. This is a group of books, uh, uh, the most important of which is called the Asclepius. And these books, most of them, were completely lost during the Middle Ages. Uh, at the fall of the Roman Empire, copies of these Hermetic manuscripts were systematically destroyed by enthusiastic Christian barbarians. And uh, uh, the, her the Hermetic manuscripts were scattered and they only survived then in monasteries in Syria and places like that. Well then, in the Renaissance, uh, the Council of Florence, under the patronage of, of uh, the Borgias and people like that, uh, they became very, there was this great interest suddenly in antiquities, because these Roman statuary and stuff was coming out of the ground. So the Council of Florence commissioned a character named Gemistasis Pletho to go to Syria and bring back these manuscripts, and they established a translation uh, commission. And they had, in manuscript, the, man, the, the works of Plato, the works of Hermes Trismegistus, a uh, whole bunch of ancient literature. And to show you what the psychology of the Renaissance was, here they had Plato, which they hadn't been able to read for a thousand years, sitting there waiting for translation. And uh, um, the, the uh, uh, Cosimo de' Medici said to Marcello Ficino, Plato can wait translate the hermetic corpus first and so it was done if you're interested in in renaissance hermeticism you can't do better than read uh dame francis yates book giordano bruno and the hermetic tradition well i want to read you some of this stuff because uh, it's very interesting and it has a uh, a modernity that is astonishing. It's also very psychedelic. Um, here's a little passage on uh, on uh, the imagination. I'm reading from Book Nine of the Corpus Hermeticum in the Scott translation. This is a four-volume set. I only brought the text and translation volume, but. Um, if you read Greek, it's all here. If you don't, it's all here in English. Um, but this will just give you a, a feeling for the approach. If then you do not make yourself equal to God, you cannot apprehend God. For like is known by like. Leap clear of all that is corporeal and make yourself to a like expanse with that greatness which is beyond all measure. Rise above all time and become eternal, then you will apprehend God. Think that for you too nothing is impossible. Deem that you too are immortal and that you are able to grasp all things in your thought, to know every craft and every science. Find your home in the haunts of every living creature. Make yourself higher than all heights and lower than all depths. Bring together in yourself all opposites of quality, heat and cold, dryness and fluidity. Think that you are everywhere at once, on land, at sea, in heaven. Think that you are not yet begotten, that you are in the womb, that you are young, that you are old, that you have died, that you are in the world beyond the grave. Grasp in your thought all this at once, all times and places, all substances and qualities and magnitudes together, then you can apprehend God. But if you shut up your soul in your body and abase yourself and say, I know nothing, I can do nothing, I am afraid of earth and sea, I cannot mount to heaven, I know not what I was nor what I shall be, then what have you to do with God? Your thought can grasp and 
good if you cleave to the body and are evil. Interesting, very different from the humble yourself, uh, hard labor, spun wool and watery beer approach of medieval uh, Christianity. Um, here's an amazing passage. Uh, you know, people like to think people thought the world was flat until uh, the Renaissance. Uh, this is a, an incredible psychedelic image of outer space that is second century AD. Would that it were possible for you to grow wings and soar into the air, poised between earth and heaven, you might see the solid earth, the fluid sea and the streaming rivers, the wandering air, the penetrating fire, the courses of the stars, and the swiftness of the movement with which heaven encompasses all. What happiness were that, my son, to see all these borne along with one impulse, and to behold him who is unmoved, moving in all that moves, and him who is hidden, made manifest through his works. And it goes on and on. It's very readable. It's very literary. It's highly poetic. It's a celebration of nature.